Hey guys, Ashlyn is here. It is Vita Day 15. It's my mom's birthday today. Happy birthday, mom. I realized through watching Peter's last video that it is National Poetry Month. Since I'm doing Vita, I couldn't let that National Poetry Month go by without reading you some of my favorite poems. So, today I'm going to read you Casey at the Bat, which is um, probably my first favorite poem aside from like nursery rhymes and stuff. And like I said, that's appropriate since it's my mom's birthday because she's the one who introduced me to this poem, I'm pretty sure. She had this great collection called The Golden Treasury of the Familiar and I think I might have stolen it at some point. Hopefully I give it back to her because otherwise it's in a box somewhere. I really enjoyed reading poetry in high school and whenever we had to do it for school, I, I really, I always had fun with it. Casey the Bat I think I used for like one of my first poetry products ever, probably in like second grade or something. I played softball from the time I was probably like in kindergarten. So this one, I always like this one. So here is Casey at the Bat by Ernest L. Thayer. The outlook wasn't brilliant for the Mudville Nine that day. The score stood four to two with but one inning more to play. And then when Cooney died at first and Barrows did the same, a sickly silence fell upon the patrons of the game. A straggling few got up to go in deep despair. The rest clung to the hope which springs eternal in the human breast. They thought if only Casey could but get a whack at that, we'd put up even money now with Casey at the bat. But Flynn preceded Casey, as did also Jimmy Blake, and the former was a Lulu and the latter was a cake. So upon that stricken multitude grim melancholy sat, for there seemed but little chance of Casey's getting to the bat. But Flynn let drive a single, to the wonderment of all, and Blake the much despised tore the cover off the ball. And when the dust had lifted, and the men saw what had occurred, there was Jimmy safe at second, and Flynn a hugging third. Then from five thousand throats and more there rose a lusty yell. It rumbled through the valley, it rattled through the dell, it knocked upon the mountain and recoiled upon the flat, for Casey, mighty Casey, was advancing to the bat. There was ease in Casey's manner as he stepped into his place. There was pride in Casey's bearing and a smile on Casey's face. And when, responding to the cheers, he lightly doffed his hat, no stranger in the crowd could doubt which was Casey at the bat. Ten thousand eyes were on him as he rubbed his hands with dirt. Five thousand tongues applauded when he wiped them on his shirt. And while the writhing pitcher ground the ball into his hip, defiance gleamed in Casey's eye, a sneer curled on Casey's lip. And now the leather-covered spear came hurtling through the air, and Casey stood a-watching in haughty grandeur there. Close by the sturdy batsman, the ball unheeded sped. That ain't my style, said Casey. Strike one, the umpire said. From the benches black with people, there went up a muffled roar, like the beating of the storm waves on a stern and distant shore. Kill him! Kill the umpire! shouted someone in the stand, and it's likely they'd have killed him had not Casey raised his hand. With a smile of Christian charity, great Casey's vigils shone. He stilled the resting tumult, bade the game go on. He signaled to the pitcher, and once more the spirit flew, but Casey still ignored it, and the umpire said, Strike two! Fraud! cried the men in thousand, and Echo answered, Fraud! But the scornful look from Casey and the audience was awed. They saw his face grow stern and cold, they saw his muscles strain, and they knew that Casey wouldn't let the ball go by again. The sneer is gone from Casey's lip. His teeth are clenched in hate. He pounds with cruel violence his bat upon the plate. And now the pitcher holds the ball, and now he lets it go. And now the air is shattered by the force of Casey's blow. Oh, somewhere in this favored land, the sun is shining bright. The band is playing somewhere, and somewhere hearts are light. And somewhere men are laughing, and somewhere children shout. But there is no joy in Mudville. Mighty Casey has struck out. Go check out, um, there are a couple, I'll leave a couple sites about National Poetry Month in the doobly-doo, and check those out. There's a, um, poetry newsletter that will send you a poem every day, so I signed up for that, even though I don't really need any more emails to come to me, but I like reading poetry, so I decided to sign up for that. Um, thanks so much for watching, and you can see all my Vita videos are linked somewhere around here, and, you know, comment, like, subscribe, let me know what your favorite poem is, or your favorite poems. Plural. I will probably read some more through the rest of Vita, so let me know if you like that. That's a thing that you would like to see me do. If you have any poems you'd like me to read, songs you'd like me to sing, all that kind of stuff, leave comments below. Have a great day, and you will see me tomorrow. Bye, guys. If you wanna sing rock and roll, get
to pick up a mic and give a shout If you want to play guitar Strum on the strings, let the chords ring out If you want to start a band Go meet some players and lend a hand If you want to follow your dreams Get off the couch and sing <laughs>